Welcome to the Vibe Within Podcast. I'm your host, Gab Cohen. Each week, we will connect through stories and conversations about wellness, yoga, addictions, spirituality, mental health, rituals, and everything in between. The goal is to transform our traumas into strengths to create the change we desire in our lives. My mission is to help others by shining awareness on real-life topics so we can learn new ways to heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Whatever you are going through in this moment, you are not alone. So let's connect and heal our vibe within. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Vibe Within podcast. I'm your host, Gab Cohen. And today's episode is really, really special to me because I got to sit down and interview one of um, my inspirations and a woman that who I really look up to. And and once I started listening to almost every podcast that she was on, um, I just got the balls to reach out to her and um, wasn't I wasn't expecting um, her to to be so cool about coming on my podcast because some of the podcasts that she's been on are really, really huge, like Aubrey Marcus's podcast or um, J.P. Sears' podcast. Like, There's a lot of podcasts that, that she's been on that are just like on another level. And even though my podcast is is somewhat new, you know, under a year old, it's, it's thriving. So I just found that momentum and I found that, that self-worth, um, to, to reach out to her and just see what would happen. So this interview that we, that we put together is really amazing. Um, we talk about all sorts of things like detoxing from alcohol and toxic relationships, um, what it's like to go through um a dark period of time when you're when you're awakening um there's just so many different areas and realms that we speak to and we have a nice realist way of speaking about these things because they could be looked at as taboo or stigmatic and wooey so you know she has a really nice combination of mixing those two worlds together. And uh, just a little bit about Anahata. Anahata blends the compassion and tenderness of an angel and the wisdom and strength of a shaman to guide profound journeys of core healing and spiritual awakening. As a certified high performance coach, shamanic healer, and soul guide, Anahata has guided thousands of individuals through core life shifts, helping them to turn their life around and manifest the life of their dreams. Anahata is the host of the internationally acclaimed Shamangelic Healing Podcast. She is the founder of Shamangelic Healing, based in Sedona, Arizona, where she offers high-performance coaching, inspirational workshops, group retreats, private healing sessions, and online courses. You can find more about Anahata at her website, shamangelichealing.com. You can follow her her on Instagram. All the links are in the show notes. Wait until the end. She's going to give us a nice little gift, a free gift, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation with her. It was really expanding and magnifying um, hearing her perspectives on all of these topics. So we'll dive right in. Enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Fresh Cap Mushroom Powders. You guys know how obsessed I am with mushroom powders. You've seen me on my stories with all of my cold brews and mushroom elixirs, so I didn't want to just use any random brand because mushroom supplements can actually be quite complicated. Did you know that a huge portion of mushroom supplements on the market don't actually contain mushrooms? Yep, unfortunately. Some of the best-selling mushroom supplements are mostly just brown rice with tons of fillers, which means they don't really contain all of the awesome benefits that mushrooms can really provide. So if you're a farmer, this is obvious, but for everyone else, you need to go with a brand that you can really trust and a brand that truly understands mushrooms. 
I've actually been using fresh cap mushroom powders for over a year and a half which is like crazy time flies and it's just crazy that um, I've been using mushroom powders for that long and my life has drastically changed because it helps me with my autoimmune I have hypothyroidism it helps me with that it can help you with brain function and lion's mane particularly helps with um, clarity and focus and like it just gives me a nice boost in the morning and you don't even really need to add coffee to your morning elixir i will just sometimes do a tea bag and coconut milk almond milk stevia cinnamon mix it up with the mushroom powders blend it up um, it's really fun and it's a morning ritual that has made my routine really enjoyable because instead of getting the jitters and feeling like a crash after having coffee coffee just really doesn't do it for me anymore maybe once in a while but these mushroom powders are so legit and i really recommend them they've helped me heal they've helped me transcend into just a different mental space and my health and wellness practice has just really gotten more more intense and deep so head on over to freshcatmushrooms.com and you'll see what i'm talking about i recommend any of the powders you can use them in coffees teas soups smoothies and other foods and you can use code gypsy love for 15 percent off that's g-y-p-s-y-l-o-v-e for 15 percent off of your order uh, freshcatmushrooms.com you can also follow them on instagram freshcatmushrooms so go ahead and order i hope you like it let me know what you think these these guys know what they're doing so enjoy let's get into this episode all right hey <laughs> i've been wanting to sit down with you and and talk with you for some time um so it's it's actually just really awesome to see you and have this conversation with you. Um, thank you so much for coming on. This means the world to me. Um, and I just want to dive right in, honestly. We'll, we'll be able to backtrack if we want, but I, Anahata, you are a, a healer and you have a different way of going about speaking about this realm of spirituality and holistic healing. And I think that you have a very raw and real and truthful foot in in the realist world as well as the holistic and woo-woo world if you want to call it that so um how long have you been in this realm of shamangelic healing is is what you do well first of all thank you so much for having me and there you know you reached out and it was an immediate yes which is not always the case when people reach out i'm like oh soul sister you know a lot of resonance even before we met and so i just i want to acknowledge you know sometimes you take that initiative to you know you have that feeling to reach out to some people you know to somebody or or to do something or take action so i just i want to acknowledge that for those people that are listening that are maybe afraid to take initiative or or make an ask or introduce themselves or do something bold that is just following your intuition, do it. That's so I'm just going to start with I that. love that. Cause I think that's true. Like, like following those pings. And I was like really hesitant at first because you know, my podcast is somewhat new. It's like less than a year old, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to DM her. I feel like I'm on her vibe. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. You know, that's for everybody, you know, because this is part of healing is part of healing the insecurities, part of empowerment is looking aware. We're sabotaging our own power just by making excuse or letting fear drive our choices instead of, you know, passion drive our choices and intuition drive our choices. And so, um, so yeah, that's, that's really powerful. Just modeling that for your listeners, like, Hey, great shit happens when you follow your heart you say what the fuck I'm gonna just do it yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. I could always say no or it could get lost and, and you know I put out messages all the time and don't hear anything back I put out requests to the universe and sometimes it goes into somebody's junk or it, it you know I might need to repeat that and um, it's just a reminder to just keep going after those things and don't let no's or fears hold you back um, so that said, um, I've been doing, uh, you know, this work for almost two, two decades now. 
And I call it shamangelic healing uh, because uh, I, I really feel passionate about blending these two worlds. And I appreciate that you said, you know, kind of the woo woo and like the grounded real. Like I'm into bringing spirituality and consciousness and empowerment into like everyday realities of like how do you deal with your parents during the holidays like at dinner you know how do you navigate a, an uncomfortable situation with a lover or someone that you want to be your lover you know to you be your partner you know like how, how do you deal with finances and the details of life that's where it's really lived and i think um, my passion is to blend those. And so shamangelic, like the shaman is not afraid to go after the density, the not, not afraid to look at the shadow, not afraid to face the fears. And I think that's a really powerful aspect to healing and empowerment is, well, let's go look at the shadow, the fears, the pain, the insecurities, the doubts, the limitations, because there's treasures found in that inquiry. There's treasures there's insights, there's gifts found when we go into those uncomfortable dark shadow places and bring light and compassion and truth to that. And the angelic part is let's open our heart, let is, let's find out what deeper expressions of love are, let's open to higher realms of consciousness, to the cosmic field of possibilities, and yeah, that can sound woo-woo, but there's very powerful energy to tap into when you allow yourself to co-create with a universal energy flow um, and to dissolve limitations that that isn't real or it's not accessible to me. We all have access to higher powers. We all have access to divine wisdom or strength that is beyond our human knowing. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes. It's like... Um it's like having that foot in the realist world is, is good. It's grounding. It's, it's the good part of the ego. It's, it's going to keep you safe, but also like you're dealing with all these people who need some deep healing. And as we're like raising our consciousness and our awareness, it's obvious that our past traumas can manifest as energy in the body as disease and as these, you know, autoimmune disease and all these crazy diseases that everybody is is now suffering with and a lot of the health and wellness industry people are are finding this connection with how energy manifests in the body and what you're doing is is just that you're you're saying okay let's like peel back the layers and see where this is actually born because it doesn't, yeah. doesn't come out of nowhere so exactly right you know when i have clients landing here at, at, in my healing center here in sedona you know, that are dealing with a diagnosis like a cancer or, you know, some kind of physical challenge that they're dealing with, um, of course, I'm going to go look at what is the emotional energetic imprint of this thing that's having to do with the heart or this breast cancer or, you know, this physical challenge in the body. And there's definitely going to be energetic and emotional imprints there that are being held in the physical body trying to get your attention to say, are you ready to heal me now? Are you ready to pay attention to me now? Are you ready to listen now? And one of the, one of the most valuable, I think, divine communications is the messages we get through actually the dense physical body in the form of pain, disease, you know, gas, <laughs> you know, digestion problems, heart ache, high blood pressure, neck pain, all of that. Those are actually transmissions from the universe, from our, soul to say, oh, hey, something you're doing in the dense physical 3D reality um, isn't actually sustainable, aligned, and healthy for your physiology and for your energy in a sustained way. So it starts knocking on the door gently and saying, hey, you know, um, I need sleep or I need, I need, you know, some more oxygen. I need different foods. And we can hear the knocks or not, totally optional. And then the knocks just get louder um, until we can't not hear it. And, and then the invitation um, to make a lifestyle change is, is a little bit louder with higher stakes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that what you just said right there is what we're all waking up to is like the little knocks at the beginning, you know, those little 
those little pings like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be taking this birth control for 10 years or, you know, little, little ideas that aren't our own. They're coming from some other like higher realm. And it's like, hmm, where'd this come from? And that's, that's your highest self giving you these messages. And um, it's just that it's being aware and conscious and then taking the steps and the initiative. So like when someone comes into your practice, um, whether they have cancer, which is probably the worst case, or um, whether they are, you know, just struggling with um, emotional, you know, turmoil. Um, what What's your, like, go-to protocol? Do you do, like, talk therapy? Do you do, obviously, a combination of things? But what's what's your, like, go-to, like, to get the information out of them and to, to see, like, where where their blockages are? Yeah, thanks for that question. And I think, first of all, I have people coming with a whole range of issues from, okay, I just had a breakup, you know, or a divorce, or I just found out my partner has been cheating on me or whatever it is that, you know, so sometimes the issues are heart related. Um, sometimes they are physiology, physiology related, you know, they're related to health and a health catalyst or a wake up call. Sometimes it's just, I know there's something more I'm not reaching my potential. I loathe my job. I'm not in alignment and they might be depressed or they might just be like, I'm ready to level up and I want to make sure that I'm clearing things out of the way from the past so that I can go to the next, next level. So sometimes people are on the like big wake up call trauma catalyst and others are just like, all right, I'm here to accelerate, accelerate my path, you know, support me in quantum leaping to the next level. And so I work on both ends of the spectrum. Um, sometimes it's a physical crisis, a heart crisis, emotional crisis, or a spiritual crisis. So, um, my go-to for me personally is a tailored session, what I call my shamanjelic healing, uh, journey. That's a two hour session. Um, I won't do any less than two hours because I go deep and, um, at the beginning, it's discovery. I just allow the person that's coming to me for whatever reason to vent, to express, to share, their story, their experience, what they're feeling. And in that, um, you know, with the with the gift of the abilities of clairsentience, um, I get to feel what's going on, the gift of clairaudience, I get to hear the deeper messages of what's being said. With clairvoyance, I get to see what's happening in the energy body. I might be seeing a guide or a vision. And so um, I, in that place of really active listening. I'm hearing for all of the clues about where the energy is leaking, where there's a limiting belief, where there's a trauma and a victim mentality that is on repeat. I'm listening for all of the clues uh, for what's in the way of their fullest uh, expressed, expanded self. And in that first part of the session is discovery. And then I'll start, you know, providing some guidance and perspective. So there may be some teaching, there may be some, um, you know, guidance about different ways to shift the perspective. And so there's going to be some counseling, coaching, coaching, inviting people to write what they're experiencing. And then we're going to go into the healing room. And during that first part, I'm getting all kinds of messages from their higher self. I'm getting messages from all their communication and 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 nonverbal communication that is giving me an arsenal of different ideas and perspectives to then go into the healing room with and every journey in the healing room is different we might need to go into a past life we might need to actually go into the core wound we might have to work with a guide that is on the other side um, we might need to see our future self or have an animal spirit journey like I'm not in charge at all of what is happening in the healing room and That's I just so cool. get to allow like full transmission in in this you know spirit meld with this particular person and allow divine transmission to create a very tailored powerful releasing expansion experience that lasts a while and um, it's really profound and amazing and I love to do it because it's new for me every time. And even though I've been doing this for almost two decades, right. like blown away about like, wow, I just felt the, the 
the intuition and listened to use this particular guide or this music or this healing instrument or this guided visualization. And it's just so deeply spot on and really provides deep energetic core shifts. Yeah. So like every session is, is completely different and unique and you've been in this long enough to pretty much let spirit take the wheel. And I like to kind of describe what you just described so beautifully as flow state. And we've all heard about flow state. So when you basically walk in the room, it's, it's kind of like when I teach yoga, I black out. I, it's like a spiritual blackout. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, it's not me, like it is me, but it's, I, I get messages and I, I basically speak all this stuff that maybe on the street outside of the yoga room, I wouldn't have said. So it's just like something comes over you. But um, that so you've been in this for two decades so you basically know how to listen to your spirit guides take us back to what was going on before this pivotal shift occurred to go into shaman shamanjalic healing um what was because i've heard you on on other interviews and i i really feel like our listeners will resonate with your story a little bit of of what you went through and just some pivotal moments that broke you open i guess Yeah, that's a great question. Um, You know, I think like most, I went into my slumber. I went into a state, you know, kind of like um, uh, uh, a frozen state and kind of went underground with my abilities and with my consciousness. And, you know, I think we just go numb for a while in life. And I think that's part of the journey, actually, um, is that we come in with all of this knowing and Yet here comes the programming and all of that. And so we start bartering off certain parts of ourself. We start playing small. We start taking somebody else's version of truth and overriding our own. And we we actually start to learn how to navigate, you know, and be in the matrix. And we don't really remember or know that there is this whole other realm of creation outside of the matrix. And so we kind of, you know, I personally went dormant with my abilities, with my knowing and, and kind of just started following, okay, go to college, get married, have kids, all of that. And, um, you know, as I started following social expectations for what is an appropriate, successful life, I kept losing more and more of myself. And um, when I was in my early 30s, a, a mother of twins, like my, the twin, my twins are like, oh, like the, the most amazing, beautiful souls. And you know what? They started waking me up, really, when I was pregnant with twins and against my will, hello, on bed rest, my kids in utero benched me. How dare they? Um, <laughs> They benched their mom and basically made me sit still. And I was a very hyperactive, a personality, like go, go, go. I have to do it all. And I'm just going to be Miss Corporate and just be a badass and, you know, get bonuses and, you know, make lots of money. And, you know, when I was five months pregnant and I started having contractions, oh wow! you know, I was like, oh, uh, you mean I have to sit still? Mm-hmm. I don't understand what that means. I don't like that. I did it for three seconds. Now what? You know, and so actually um, a big catalyst of my awakening was my kids, my twins, literally putting me on bed rest going, you know what? You think you're so important. You're not. You think that you're replaceable, you know, like you're irreplaceable in corporate. Guess what? You're not. You're totally replaceable. Um, you think that you have to be on the go to prove something to everybody else. You don't. What you need to do is sit still Mm -hmm. and learn how to meditate and learn how to self-calm and learn how to reprioritize what is really important in life because what you think is important and what I was good at and really crushing it, you know, financially and professionally is like, that isn't what's important and you're not going to find your greatest joy in those, you know, pursuits. And so they started slowing me down. And I learned how to breathe and I learned how to meditate. And it was so, it was a whole other realm that I hadn't ever explored. And in that there was, I was opening to higher states of possibilities and what was coming up as I became a mother and navigating the responsibilities of all of that, 
Um, I was also realizing that I needed to change diet and lifestyle because, um, you know, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating well, and I was getting bitchy, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. when two little kids look up at you and like dragon lady sugar meltdown is like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, maybe dragon lady isn't who I want parenting right now. <laughs> you know? So it sounds like your, your twins basically made, made you wake up to your burnout. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> and also to prioritizing because I had totally different things. I had money, success, um, and moving up the corporate ladder um, and material wealth all as my priority pursuits. And my kids just turned that upside down and I actually left corporate to be home full time with my twins because I fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling things that I'd never felt before, like this depth of connection and presence and the joy of really holding space for two other beautiful human beings. And so I had to let go of my identity, my attachment, my value, and my worth that was all driven by salary and external validation. And it was a real wake up call to be like, wait, who's giving me a bonus for being up at three in the morning for six months? You know, yeah. who's giving me um, extra overtime for, you know, 24, seven, seven days a week, 365 days. Where do I get vacation pay? Where, where do I get vacation? Like none of that is happening in parenting. At least my, that was my experience. Yeah, so I yeah. was also needing to source personal validation instead of external validation, which was a big F and wake up call of like, whoa. Um, <laughs> yeah. First off, I just want to say like, like the whole twins thing yesterday I nannied or babysat a five month old for like eight hours and I praise you I praise you I praise every parent on this earth um just little just little side note just had to say that because it really resonates with me right now um so basically yeah the body can only take so much is what you're saying and then right. it, it realizes and then you get all these physical burnout and adrenal fatigue and yeah. depression and anxiety and then it just builds up and builds up and you know that had a big effect it, it actually had a really big effect on my marriage because I wasn't taking care of myself I was prioritizing taking the care taking care of the kids and I didn't know how to prior, prioritize self-care a lot of the programs as a young woman were accommodate everybody else at the expense of self that's what a good mother does that's what a good wife does and so I, I also lost myself and my identity in that whole process and did not know how to value self-care and prioritize um, me without guilt or shame. And so I also got to, you know, dance with the shame monster and the guilt monster. And also without having a lot of conscious tools, which I now have and continue to acquire in, 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 in navigating a relationship is because I wasn't raised with conscious communication in, in, in relationship. And so um, I think a lot of unhealthy patterns of blame, of denial, of, of, you know, emotional agitation was a part of my marriage at the time, especially when we were both kind of in overwhelm, kind of a little in over our heads um, in navigating parenting. Because, you know, as a nuclear family, then we don't have the support of community. And so I think being ice, a lot of, a lot of families are isolated and have to do it themselves without like you were wonderful providing a little anti-service to kind of help, help out a mom that has a five month old and give her a break. I didn't have any breaks yeah. and I didn't have family nearby or aunties or grandmas nearby to really help. And so that, that extra strain provided a lot of stress on my marriage. And so um, there was a lot, a lot of conflict, a lot of unhealthy uh, communication. And so, you know, at that time, after 13 years together, it was like, okay, I think uh, it's going to be a marital liberation. Yeah. Um, and and in, in making that choice, Gab, it sent me on a big path of my own um, reclaiming my identity and reestablishing who I was and learning conscious tools for communication, learning self-care, learning life balance, um, spiritual connection. And like it, I dove in, that was really my catalyst was the divorce because I was 
pissed alone, angry, overwhelmed, and um, now a single mom of, of twins. And so I kind of had to get my shit together and I knew that traditional therapies weren't going to get me where I needed to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that was your, that was your pivotal uh, channel into that. So what you said just now really resonates with me. And I think a lot of the listeners too, because I get a lot of DMS from a lot of these, these women and men who are isolated and feeling alone. And I've heard you speak a lot about um, clearing these times of clearing um, especially like toxic relationships, um, you know, going on more of a cleansing vibration of, of sober, a sober ish lifestyle, you know, like not, not drinking. I wouldn't really say that I'm, I'm a alcoholic or a, a narcotics addict or anything like that. But I think that our generation is really struggling to find what it means to actually live without this attachment to like drinking and drugs and partying, like like sober sex, this is something that our, that our generation like doesn't know what it is. And it's really scary. And this, this time that social media is on the rise, I feel like the majority of, of people who are using social media and the health and wellness industry are very alone and not feeling community. And although there are several amazing, amazing communities, there's, there's that, that layer um, over us that can just make us feel very, isolated and i think that a lot of the people who are stepping into this lifestyle of of not being a victim to ha- to having to be going to bars and drinking and going on dates and having dr- and having drunk sex and like how c- what's your what's your advice for for women or men like me who are just trying to step out of that realm like for me it's been i haven't drank in 4 months and as I am reclaiming my health physically, I do feel very alone and, and very like just on the outside. So what's your, what's your advice for people like, like me who, who are trying to navigate through? Yeah, I, I want to honor that. Um, you're going through growing pains. And, you know, when we go through growing pains, cer- certain social habits won't fit any longer. And certain substances won't fit who you're becoming certain like drunk sex was you know i i don't know that i i'm in fact i'm very certain i didn't have sober sex in college okay there's yeah yeah same. let me think about that like no don't have to think very long pretty pretty sure there wasn't sober sex at least always buzzed yeah exactly and that's the problem that's the problem i I mean i'd have to think about that but for the most part yeah that's probably true right and you know at a soul level gab i think what we're craving is deeper connections and when we're in this place of just gossiping around glasses of wine at happy hour that's really not nourishing to the soul and, you know, we don't wake up the next day feeling great about ourselves when we've been, you know, drunk and just gossiping, you know, or um, had, you know, consensual sex, but not meaningful sex. We, we wake up actually the next day not feeling more loved and not feeling more whole. And I think, you know, being honest about this is, is so powerful to just be like, did that leave me more whole or did it leave me less whole? And I think that's a great question as we grow and grow through growing pains is that we ask, is that substance, is that habit, is that circle of people, is this way of relating um, fit who I'm becoming? Not just does it fit me now, but does it fit the person I'm becoming? Or do I need to like, like a snake skin, do I need to shed that skin in order to move into the next version of myself? And I have over and over and over again as I go through growing pains and you go through growing pains, I've let go of certain circles of people. I've let go of things in my cupboard. I've let go of different social, you know, different social choices because they don't fit who I'm becoming. And that just means when you're in this place of loneliness, loneliness, it means you haven't reached out to find your new tribe Mm -hmm. because there are plenty of people that are also choosing a conscious like sober life it's not all burning man total sedation drunkenness and on how many substances can you be on at once you know how much can you leave your body yeah. and it's like, well if you're going through growing pains you're actually realizing no i actually want to be in my body i actually want to feel 
what it's like to be intimate without a substance between me and another person. I actually want to feel them. I want to feel the rawness of me. I want to feel my fears and uncomfort, and I want to talk about it. I want to get into the depth of what real connection is. And you're, it just sounds to me like you're going through growing pains. And Yeah. Doesn't celebrate. that, like, what you're saying right now, I think that the awakening process can scare people off, though. It's... Yeah. It's a very, um, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like people who, who maybe aren't awakening as fast or everybody's one, everybody's the same. We're all in this human body, but it almost makes me feel personally, I don't know about anybody else possibly, but it makes me feel like I'm subconsciously being put on a pedestal from other people because I speak in a different way, like you and I, and then it makes me kind of feel like shit because, um, because then I feel like, oh man, like I'm not trying to make people feel like I'm better than them. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to make people feel like they're, they're not awakened enough. And, but I guess, I guess that just, that's the circle of it because when you start to come out of the trenches and that darkness of the, you know, maybe drinking isn't so good for me anymore. Maybe hanging out with this group of people isn't so good for me anymore. Um, it's, it's like ripping off a bandaid and you kind of have to deal with that loneliness in order to like do the clearing that you talk about and the toxic friendships and, and like getting into this new vibration and like what you just said about, I want to be in my body. Like that's exactly what it is. And it's like, some people don't know how to, don't know how to process that. Right. And, you know, I think, uh, thank you for bringing this up because this is, this is really juicy and it's real because people are going through this because let's just say, you know, there's a secret circle of people and one person starts growing. That's automatically going to threaten what has kept us together. So it's not uncommon for your best friend to be the first one to throw the dagger. Yeah. You know, and you're like, wait a second, we're friends and I'm growing. Aren't you happy for me? And it's just like, no, you growing threatens me. So, um, and I don't like it because I'm also afraid you're going to leave me. I'm afraid that you're going to, um, you know, really abandon this connection. I'm also afraid of my own power and my own growth and I'm not ready to face it. So you're pissing me off. Right. <laughs> you know, like as you grow in different circles, I think what you can do is have compassion rather than to try to pull somebody with you. Right. Um, if they're experiencing judge, if you're experiencing their judgments, that's not about you. That's about them. If you're being an elitist bitch. Yeah, that is about you. <laughs> if you're like, Oh, I can't believe you still drink or, Oh my God, you don't namaste after every, you know, meal. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in that place of spiritual elitism, yeah, you're going to push some people away. Mm -hmm. You're also going to push some people away just by you growing and just by being you. And this is about learning to stand in those newer versions of you and to allow other people to not like it. They like the old version of you. I can't tell you how many people got pissed at me when I stopped drinking, which was, well, 19 years ago wow my whole circle of college friends like you know a lot of us that's what we had in common and yeah. you know oh you're just not as fun or you don't you know you don't you think you're better or you don't come out and drink with us anymore and I'm like hey do you want to go for a run on the beach do you want to do yoga with me do you want to go for a hike and there were a handful of people that were able to meet me in a, in a vibration and in an experience without alcohol and I had to mourn the reality, Gab, that many of my relationships, what kept them together was the alcohol, and that's all we had in common. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, I get to be in reality that w if this substance doesn't keep us connected, that we actually don't have an authentic reason to stay connected. We don't actually care about what's happening in each other's life. We don't actually care about each other's dreams and challenges. We just want to sedate and get silly and do stupid shit. And I, there was a time for that in my life, and it was a super, a lot of fun. And um, there was a handful of people that grew with me. And I don't care if some people are drink or not. I can be around people having a glass of wine. I can be around somebody right. drunk. Yeah, yeah. It's just not going to be my everyday reality to be in a bar engaging in conversations with people that aren't really in their body. Yeah. 
It's not where I receive great joy. I would rather have a deep conversation about real stuff like what we're having right now. To me, that nourishes my soul. Yes. And to somebody else, they might criticize that and think it's stupid. And it's like, that's okay. This is medicine for me. It doesn't matter if it's medicine for anybody else. And so this is also about owning what fits you and shedding, letting other people's judgments about your spiritual path or your growth, like affect you at all. You get to learn how to embrace who you are as you go through your growing pains, realizing that some people won't like it. Some people will be threatened by it. Some people will judge it. And um, some people will be inspired by it. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm, t- I'm not interested in trying to be something I'm not to get the validation of people that actually don't really know who they are or know who I am at a deep soul level. Right. And if, you're, if your relationship and your bond was built off of an altered state, then that's what, that's the, that's the fucked up ripping off, off of the bandaid. It's like, oh, wow, like that's not me anymore. And then all these like, who am I? And I'm a crock of shit or, you know, you know, all these things that, that kind of lead me into the next question or topic, which is you talk a lot about the dark night of the soul. And a lot of listeners are probably going through that, but also a lot of the listeners are going through their Saturn return, which I'm going through that right now. And I've been thinking a lot recently is like, how do I decipher between my Saturn return and dark night of the soul? Or can it happen at the same time? Like, how would you differentiate those two topics? Because they just seem so similar. And um, Let's leave all of the names and the timing and when it happens and why it happens. And yeah, it's a catalyst, mm-hmm. whatever it is, because, uh, you know, a dark night of, of the soul, like Saturn return is, uh, you know, more al- aligned with certain timing, you know, your a, a number of years. And the thing right. is, is like, you know, these catalysts or these wake up calls can happen at any time of your life. Sometimes they're little ones and it's just like, oh, relationship upgrade. Sometimes it's mm, health upgrade. Sometimes they stack and it's like, oh, oh, this is a full meltdown of everything. This is like, I need to completely rebuild physiology. I need to completely rebuild what's important to me. I need to completely rebuild who I'm around, what I value, what's important, where I work, and what I say yes to. And sometimes it's these full meltdown rebuilds and, you know, where where everything's up for review. And so there's no right or wrong process. It's the journey for the soul. And they're each experience that each one of us is going through is a series of tests. Sometimes they're a little pop quiz and sometimes like it's a massive you know, final exam that says all of this stuff that you've been learning and talking about as a yoga teacher or, you know, as a health, you know, advocate or whatever it is, all of these things that you've been learning, all of these books that you've been reading, all of these courses you've been taking. Now here's a real life classroom experience, a real test to see, can you choose yourself? Can you choose compassion? Can you choose forgiveness? Because that's what you've been learning. So as you grow and and are drawn to different content and different material and, and start expanding your awareness. You like a rubber band, you can't go back to that smaller place once you've expanded, you know? And, and so when you start moving outside and knowing things you didn't know before, you can't unknow them. And so you, the, the most uncomfortable, you know, you can say, Oh, I feel alone. Well, you know, and it can feel a lot more alone to deny who you are. It can feel a lot more alone and scary to be pretending and staying in a job, in a relationship, in an identity of self that doesn't fit you because that's where we get into depression. And and it also correlates to when we're not following our truth and we're not in alignment, this is where addiction patterns come in because we want to sedate. We feel like shit and it's like, okay, well then, where it, this is where we put the band-aid on 
Okay. You know, yeah. I don't want to feel the fact that um, this relationship is an alignment for me. I don't want to feel the fact that alcohol has become a poison and it's no longer a medicine for me. Right. I don't want to come to the truth that I'm using sugar to sedate um, emotions that I'm not really addressing. And these patterns keep repeating themselves and I don't want to deal with it. So when we're not in alignment with the growth of our soul, which is happening, whether we like it or not, it's happening. And we can ignore it and we can deny it. But the truth is it's happening. And each of us are going through that process at a different rate and at different times with different catalysts. And sometimes we get a bunch of lessons at once and then we plateau for a little while. So, you know, this is about not projecting that, oh, everybody else is having these experiences. These, this is my experience. This is the test that I'm dealing with right now. And this is what's up for me. And how am I doing with this test? Am I failing it? Am I getting a C minus? Like, you know, am I acing it? And, you know, we're constantly giving tests. I look at life as a classroom. Yes. And um, sometimes we crush it and we really nail it. And sometimes we just, we keep failing the same test because we're not ready to go back and look at why did I get this wrong? What do I need to change? Can I study something? Can I grow something? Can I ask for help? Can I make a different choice so that I can turn this fail into, uh, you know, a fab fabulous victory? And that's where people really start turning it around is when they're willing to go look at the fails and say, all right, I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to get help. I'm ready to learn a different tool because I keep using, you know, uh, I keep using my finger to try to tap a big nail and maybe I need a different tool. Yeah. Like, cause once the same, the same issue or the same problem or the same cycle, the same pattern, the same the same asshole that us women keep bringing in or the same party girl that, that every guy brings in or that toxic person. It's like, how, how many rounds is it, it going to take? And sometimes it takes just more rounds for other people. But, <laughs> but what, it, what, it, you know, once we're waking up to it, it's like, oh man, okay, that's, that's what I need to work on because it's the same problem. It's the same issue. It, whatever city you move to, you're, you're going to, you can't escape it. It's, it's like this deep karmic lesson that, and I just moved to Philly from Miami. I lived in Miami for five years and something just my whole life turned upside down and I, I moved here on a whim and, you know, little by little I realized like, okay, the same issues, the same patterns, the same cycles, they followed me here. It's not like going and traveling the world and not having a home and being a nomad is going to clear out all of your problems. You're going to be, you know, it's the same shit. Um, and I think that's, that's what we have to like kind of come in into, into, into tame with because um, it's part of the waking up process. And this is where we get to have compassion for ourselves because sometimes we bang our head, head against the wall and we don't get it. And, um, and we blame somebody else for putting the wall there, you know, and then we do it again. And then we're like, well, you know, that's because of this other thing, or we make excuses or we pretend like it didn't happen, you know? And so these patterns keep repeating and they keep repeating. And, you know, like I said, you, just like I said, my abilities went dormant for a while and that's okay. And sometimes we have to stay in this alcohol place or we have to stay in a denial place or in an unhealthy relationship pattern. It takes as long as it takes. And I have really learned to, to, to table the judgment, whether it's about my own timing of getting a lesson or if it's the timing that I would project onto somebody else that says, gosh, you know, sober up already, or gosh, don't you, you know, can you break up with this person already? Can't you see this isn't the right thing? And all of my judgments imposing on them that they should learn a lesson quicker. And you know what? It's not my place to judge that. And, you know, we have to be in those places deeply over and over and over again until we're ready to say, I don't want to, I don't want this pattern anymore. I mean, I don't know how many times I got drunk and threw up all over myself and blacked out and like stupid shit. And so I don't remember. I, I guess that's good. I'm no, I mean, honestly, I'm not making light of, 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 you know, alcohol, but I, I am acknowledging yeah. that that was a powerful part of where I am right now is to sedate. And mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to sober up until I was. And I mean, that last 
drink, which was a cosmopolitan. I remember it. Like, I, and I, my, my death grip was around that glass. And I swear to you, if had somebody had tried to take that out or guilt me into waking up or tried to put me in some program, I'd probably be in jail right now. I'm serious. Because yeah. <laughs> cause you're not ready, you know? And you can't force it on somebody. You can, you can't force it. And I, you know, I have judged myself and other people for, you know, well, this timing isn't appropriate. You know what? The timing is what it is. Every plant has its own germination cycle in nature. Some plants can, you know, make fruit within a, a, a couple of years. Some take 40 years before a tree can make fruit. And so I, I think it's really valuable to leave the judgments on the side if people say, well, I should have woken up earlier. Somebody else should wake up now. And I think if we give, get out of everybody else's business and just be like, look, I respect that this soul, whether it's an addiction to narcotics, whether it is, you know, somebody that's in an unhealthy, abusive relationship or they're in denial or they're having health problems and they're not changing it, whatever, or whether that's you, that we cultivate a level of compassion for respecting that this soul is going through and creating its own classroom, experiencing its own tests, and it's not for me to judge it or to impose on it or try to get somebody to wake up, but I recognize that everybody has the right to wake up if, when, and how they choose in this lifetime or another, and it gets me out of their business, mm -hmm. you know, I can have compassion for the pain and suffering that they're having because they're failing a test and it might be hard for me to watch, but if I, if I awaken my higher state of consciousness, I can see, oh, this is teaching them something. Right. And, and they're hurting. Yeah. And, and, and there's compassion for their they're suffering. You know? That's a huge part of the awakening for, for me. And I can probably speak for some of these listeners is that moving away from the resentment and the anger has been a really heavy and cleansing process and yeah. me making amends with myself and forgiving people who have fucked me over or wronged me or, you know, that's, that's the cycle that I have to, to break. And I feel like I could talk to you about this for hours. Um, <laughs> I'd love to have you on again. We can maybe get deeper into healing um, from like toxic relationships and, and feminine healing um, in yeah. that sense and self-worth and love because that's, that's what you're all about. And you just have so much knowledge and wisdom to offer that I feel like I could go down a rabbit hole with you for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah. But before we, we end, I just want to say thank you again and for the listeners who want to check you out, um, where can we find you um, the easiest? Where's the easiest way to find you? Thank you for asking. Uh, shamangelichealing.com. I guess that will be in the show notes. Yes, for sure. .com. I'm here in Sedona for those people that want in-person you know, support. People come for private sessions or retreats or events or programs or a, a tailored personalized retreat. That's, the, you know, a lot of people kind of choosing that, especially when they're going through a big life shift out of density or into light, whatever. Um, so shamanjelichealing.com. And, and then I also have the Shamanjelic Healing podcast. And that is Which is amazing. Um, Yes, thank you. I love you. it. I love it. Um, yes, yeah, so the Shamanjelic Healing Podcast, that's on Stitcher and iTunes and all of that. You can find me on Instagram, Anahatananda. Come and follow that for sure because that, there's always inspirational posts there. And um, I do life coaching. There's online coaching so that that way people can access whatever support they need. Like, I am here Amazing. to inspire millions to shine. And, you know, I've created a whole range of different ways for people to plug in and get things from free all the way up to, you know, deep one-on-one -on -one work uh, as a high performance coach. I'm really lit up about working with people and activating their fullest potential. So, Amazing. and oh, hey, I have a free gift for your audience. Oh, yes. Yes. We're going to put that in the show notes for everybody as well. What is it? Okay, well, first of all, I want to do a quantum visualization. There's a quantum visualization. It's a guided audio to kind of help you envision who you are becoming, you know, help, help you envision the future version of yourself. And as you do that, you start to move and things that aren't in alignment start to fall off. And so a daily quantum visualization so that you can rewire your beliefs about who you are and who, what is possible in the brain first so that the rest of you knows it's possible. So I want to give you a free, 
Amazing. quantum visualization and also um, my quantum leap program, which is my online coaching. I want to give your um, uh, listeners a hundred dollars off that program, yes. which is so dope. a crazy deal. Amazing. Um, so that'll be in the free gift. And yeah, Gab, I just, I want to say thank you for you being like radically honest and authentic and courageous and genuine and vulnerable um, with, with today, our transmission, but also just, you know, with your journey. And I think it's really powerful um, what you're doing. And um, thank you so much for like really leading with your heart and, um, and your temperance and your radiance. That makes me feel really um, warm receiving that. Thank you so much. And I hope to talk to you again and everybody will connect with you. Um, You are just a, a healing goddess that people you have so much knowledge and um i can't wait to to dive down that rabbit hole with you again <laughs> and if i'm ever in sedona i will definitely hit you for up so sure, for sure definitely thank you so much thank you so much much, thank love. You so much thank you and thanks for everybody for tuning in if you've been listening this long that's because there's something deep here for you so follow your heart and listen to your dreams and your passions Thank you guys so much for tuning into that episode of The Vibe Within. I know that you guys probably loved Anahata as much as I did. Um, Speaking to her was really humbling and just easy, easy to resonate with her and the way that she speaks and brings the two worlds together of holistic healing and, and shamanism and energy healing and all this stuff that we consider wooey, but also how she has a huge step in the realist world like she's a real woman she's been through things that normal people go through and she is just uh has so much to offer so go check her out and uh, check out the links in the show notes to go grab your free gift um thank you guys just for always sharing and tagging and all of your subscribe subscriptions and um all of your comments and everything like that so if you want to support the podcast um, that's a great way to support just by sharing the episode by tagging me or sending this episode to a friend or a family member or any of the episodes that you feel you, you should share or that it resonated with you um, sharing is caring and um, sometimes we don't realize how many resources and how many podcasts and how many helpful um, videos and stuff like that we can actually share with people and it can it can give them a, a new tool or just listening to a conversation um, can be so healing and, and can help us reach a new light, a new perspective that we couldn't, you know, find um, on our own. You know, it's that's why we have our toolboxes to get us through those those hardships, those chaotic those chaotic days, um, whatever. So continue to share and um, if you haven't left me a review yet please leave me a review that really helps the podcast thrive um, and rise to the surface so I really appreciate you guys Uh, I'll leave you with the rest of this song enjoy
With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick! Sorry, kids! Yep, even easier than that. And with our top-rated app, you can bank anytime, anywhere, making Capital One an even easier decision. Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? New consumer accounts only. Approval required. Term supply. Capital One and a member FDIC.